number four of five children, and number three, my brother above me, he was studying architecture in Delft. And he brought me to the Faculty of Architecture and entering the model making room, I thought it was an amazing, beautiful space. I thought, yes, this is it. I'm Francine Hoeben, founding partner and creative director of Meccano Architects in Delft, the Netherlands. And this is the Architect Series. We never had the intention to start an office really, you know, we were students, we did a par participate in a competition and at that time, that competition was in 1980, 1979 even it started and we won it in 1980, but at that time there were almost no competitions and uh, it was about um, student housing and new ways of living together and designing um, housing residential for, um, for, of course, affordable residential. And um, we won that competition and we were still students. We did realize the, the building. So first we were, I was with two uh, student friends and later on even with four student friends. And then we started uh, the office Meccano officially in 1984. But in a way we started already by winning the competition in 1980. I'm Arne Leibers, I'm architect and partner at Meccano. Uh, I started here as an intern, uh, so for me it was very interesting that I could learn this company in the way how it works from the beginning. Uh, and I was ver very inspired by the way how they work, uh, how much work and energy they put in the projects, uh, from uh, if it was a competition or it was a direct, a direct commission. Um, they put a lot of uh, energy and time in that, and I was very inspired to be a part of that. We always try to, to be one Meccano family and uh, by operating internationally we have uh, a lot of different teams. Um, so that's why we uh, in our um, uh, canteen but also uh, every week uh, and even, even monthly we try to organize trips but also organize uh, uh, parties and, and, and events uh, even in our big garden uh, that all the people come together and that they learn from each other but that also socially they can, uh, they can relax. We are approximately here with 130 people uh, and we try to mix it, eh, so male and female equally, uh, but also in age we try to uh, mix it also equally uh, and with a lot of different nationalities. By working internationally we also think it's important to um, get all that experience and, uh, and, and, and knowledge about the cultures here. And we have uh, local uh, offices, so if we have a project abroad, uh, we work together sometimes with a local partner or we uh, even start our own, uh, own office on site. The National Kaohsiung Center for the Arts, we did design it for the competition in 2006. Uh, it's in Taiwan and I had never been in Taiwan. And going to, to Taiwan and visiting the site, what used to be a former military compound, it was a kind of amazing. It was totally empty, it was gated. And entering the, through the gate, it was, I saw barracks, I heard barking dogs and I saw the banyan trees. For me, trees always say something about a local climate and about the soil. And the banyan tree became our inspiration. We kept the banyan trees as, a, as part of the park 
But the banyan tree is like, it's a very horizontal tree, uh, protecting you from the rain and the sun. And we saw observing the city itself uh, and the country that people even play arts, informal arts, underneath the trees, protecting you from the rain and the sun. And that's what we did. Uh, we had to design an opera house, a concert hall, a small concert hall, and a theater, a playhouse. We put them all next to each other with in-between space, empty space, open space. We took a roof over it, like the banyan tree, and where the crown of the tree, the crown, the roof, touches the, uh, the soil, the park. It becomes an open-air theater. And the space in between these four auditoria is open. It's um, a tropical space, it's a ventilated space. In Taiwan, but also in China often, or nowadays in the United States, you, you're in the outside and it's hot, <laughs> and then you enter a climatized space, what is often very cold. <laughs> and so this gives a very nice transition from for your own body, being outside, going in this in-between space, and then going to a climatized space. I think it's very healthy also. How we did design technically the whole building in Kaohsiung, mm -hmm. it's almost like because of earthquakes, our typhoons, um, tropical, 100% humidity, uh, enormous amount of rain can fall there. It's a very pleasant city, I don't worry to go there. But what we did is almost designing it as like an enormous cargo ship on the waves. Uh, so that was very important, so we, we had to make it very strong and also the whole skin, it was designed, uh, made by the local shipbuilding industry and it's really welded all together like a cargo ship. But that gives it also a very nice scale and texturing because of the welding that is shown on the, on the skin. So what we try to do as Meccano is to design for have what we call people, place, purpose. We try to design for that country, that place, for those people and how they can use it. And also what makes me very proud, how it's used there, it makes me very happy. Because you can go to a performance, but you can also do all your inf informal performances in the, in the Banyan Plaza and in the park. That was our dream. And it's really used like that and um, happy. It's really amazing. It took 12 years to build it. That whole process was amazing, also very intense. Um, we had to find out how to materialize it. And the city itself gave us our inspiration. Sono Matteo Cavalieri e faccio il modellista da Meccano. I modelli di studio, come quasi dappertutto, partono con delle shape di foam. Eh, Meccano è abbastanza orientata sul legno, nel, negli interni, nelle facciate, eh, questo si rivede anche nei modelli. Eh, quindi tantissimo legno sicuramente e cerchiamo di integrare un po' tutti i materiali un po' che richiamano il contesto, un po' che esprimono il colore o la matericità del progetto. È un po' quello che piace a me, quello che piace al partner o eh, al team che, che lo sta seguendo. È più semplice relazionare secondo me con qualcosa di tastabile, toccabile con le mani e esprime la matericità del progetto la scala, la luce, c'è più feeling con qualcosa che puoi creare con le mani rispetto a un, 
a un disegno, a un'immagine. The Tainan Public Library is situated just north of Kaohsiung and it's a very historical city in uh, Taiwan. What was important for us is also to mention at the same time we were working on the Mies van der Rohe Library in Washington and in a way that influenced each other. So I really did like the Mies van der Rohe building, the kind of enormous horizontal spaces. And what we did is a kind of reinterpretation of a Miesian building, but make it for Tainan. We really want to, to make it placemaking because it's a new area in Tainan. So, uh, and it's, it's the municipal library, so it's, it's a big one. So to create this, I think, iconic building from the inside and the outside, but also creating a kind of outdoor public space hey, by making this formal language with the beautiful columns. It's really placemaking in Tainan, in a new area. It's not in an existing uh, area. And it has a beautiful color. It has a kind of uh, the champagne color, <laughs> we call it. Because we also had to deal, yeah, for me it's also kind of composition because the buildings surrounding were kind of white and off-white. And then we said, no, we'll make it champagne because otherwise it's a little bit competing with all the different whites in the surrounding. Um, of course, the library is a very important uh, building, public building. But also it's for me funny that in all these different cultures you have make different libraries, but also different functions in the libraries. For instance, in Taiwan, in this one, was very important the cooking or the comics or the still the newspaper for the elderly. Working together with artists of giving space uh, to artists is, has always been very important in our projects, especially in, of course in our pu public uh, projects. Like in, in the Tainan Library where this kind of amazing thing is hanging, it's like yeah, it feels like little pieces of paper and floating and um, it's also for us sometimes very surprising what an artist can do and give his or her uh, own interpretation. It's really nice. And also for me, the future is very much about collaboration. And that's also what we have in-house in our own office, like even combining architecture, uh, urbanism, landscape, restoration. We also deal much more with existing buildings, but also collaboration outside the office with artists, with uh, science, people from science, uh, structural engineers, um, all kinds, uh, we also now working with people from artists who are uh, indigenous, so to understand all these things and uh, you keep on learning and learning and learning. And that's, I think, that's really Mecano. Yeah, I think cooperating is essential. I mean, it's a big part of what we do, um, is working together and especially also because we work uh, abroad. I think for us it's really important that with all different nationalities that we have in the office we work together but we also learn from all the different cultures uh, and experiences. Eh? So for instance if we do an educational building we tend to uh, test but also ask all the people how they uh, experience their education period and how we really can use all that different experience uh, to our projects. Library of the Technical University in Delft, we did design it in the 90s. 
and of course it's the university where I did study. And you have to realize that at that time it was, of course I did love to study in Delft and also at the Faculty of Architecture, but all the buildings were very introvert and in between was just a bit, bit parking space and a, and a road. So I was kind of missing grass or a campus feeling. And what we did is design the library almost like a campus-like building, like a piece of grass. So we did put the building of um, Van der Boeken Bakema. It was a very concrete building, but it was just uh, on top of all kind of um, concrete tiles. We put that building in the grass, put the grass like a piece of paper, tilted it up, and put columns underneath it, um, and put a cone through it a symbol of the beauty of um, a technical or mathematical form. And that became the library. And it really became the symbol of the, it still is the symbol of the Technical University in Delft. And we keep on updating the library, the interior, because uh, when we did design the library, the, li the main librarian, the chief librarian, he said, you know, Francine, I know the library will change in the future, but nobody knows exactly what will happen. My name is Lianne, I'm an interior architect at Meccano. Um, for the projects, uh, the way that we choose materials is always uh, based on, uh, on the context and we always try to find a nice balance between warm materials but also things that, uh, for example, connect to the site or to uh, the type of project uh, that we do. And uh, we have this really human-centered approach where also we like to think of the acoustics, that it's uh, also a really nice place to say and pleasant for your ears, for your eyes. And, uh And that we keep always contact with this library and we always try to update to the newest developments. In the projects that we do, we have this uh, this uh, human uh, approach always. So it's always the, the user that uh, um, yeah, defines what the space will be like and which activities uh, will take place. Not only the users, but maybe also people from outside. And based on their activities and what the people come to do there, we create the spaces. And um, what is always really important is, of course, the context, but also the type of user and the type of client and how uh, the uh, the interior space with its materials, with its uh, atmosphere, uh, really reflect uh, the identity uh, of the space, of the client, of the users, and uh, how they really connect uh, with each other. I always say a public building needs public space. And what we did here is that the public space is also on top of our building, what I think was almost never done before at that time. And it's still used like that. Um, we even always have this little thing when it's snowing in the Netherlands, people go, go and run to this building. What's happening on the building? People start to ski there. But you know, it's people sitting on top of the building. People use it for even training and run up and down. And um, I think it's now already there for 20 years, 25 years. And it's still very, very much loved and used. Dordrecht is one of the most historical cities of, of the Netherlands. It has a very rich history. But it was, then infrastructure came, it was from the 50s and the 60s and the 80s. So there is railroad tracks and there's a highway. And uh, so the whole city became disconnected through infrastructure, the way the infrastructure was done by, uh, lost, his, uh, lost his, his or her identity. And we were asked to make a master plan how to deal with infrastructure, especially the railroad track, um, develop a um, new, uh, new vision on the railroad station, how to integrate, um, uh, make new residential housing and even some new offices, and to connect the city again with the water.
that area of the Netherlands, it's um, it's a delta. It's close to the Biesbos. It's close even to the it's the way to the harbor of Rotterdam. So these cities, this very historical city, was very well connected historically by the water, and we're now bringing back by working on also making this new railroad track um, zone but also connecting the city again with the water. And of course, to make a healthy city, a green city, and all these elements. When infrastructure was done in a more technical way, like 100 years, 50 years ago, it became more a barrier in a city. Like the railroad track was really dividing the northern side of the city from the southern side of the city. And also with parts that were elevated. And But how can you get this flow of people and that you want to make it as one city, that all the people belong together um, in a nice way. On the northern side where the historical city is, is the railway station. And on the southern side, there was a beautiful park of Socher, famous uh, landscape architect. So what we did is um, to uh, get rid of this barrier, we took the Socher park and we get it over the railroad track. So now the two parts of the city are much more connected. You have a new railway station, what was also needed. Uh, and in a fluid way, and even you can bike it, or even if you're in a wheelchair, you can go from one side to the city to the other side of the city. My name is Eliana Felicio and um, I'm the brand and the PR public relations manager at the office. I think at least at Meccano what is important to us is the PR department needs to be very well connected with the business development so that I can understand what markets are we after? What kind of projects do we have in hand? Uh, what kind of competitions are we pursuing? And also, uh, it is very important for me to be well connected with all the partners, with the direction of the office, so that I can get all the input and good feedback, and then together with the PR team, to define the strategy. The digital reach and, and, and to create audiences uh, online is crucial for the promotion of an uh, office like ours. We need and we want to expose our work, not only with students or uh, architectural lovers, but with clients, possible clients. So it is essential for us to use all these tools in order to publicate and to publish and to spread as much as possible our work. Winning the Delft Station and City Hall, for me personally, um, maybe the crown on my uh, mobility journey. Uh, I, I did put mobility on the agenda from the year 2000, I think. How should we look at mobility, not in a technocratic way, but as part of how people experience uh, mobility as part of their daily life. And of course our office is based in Delft. And when designing the railway station and the city hall on top of it, and the, the railroad track went into a tunnel, I used to live for 15 years <laughs> on that railroad track, so it was also, for me, again, very personally, very special. And it went down, what was not that often done in the Netherlands, maybe that was the first one in the Netherlands, even to make it a, a railroad track in a tunnel. And for me, it was very important that I wanted that people arrive in Delft when you enter or arrive in the bill road, um, in the station, the railway station. Delft has, for me, kind of two identities. Of course, our office here is based also in the very historical city, what is also very much linked to um, Johannes Vermeer to the, um, the royal family. It's very historical, but at the same time it's a city of the Technical University in Delft, but it's totally about innovation. So how can we combine that experience uh, and at the same time it's risky because if you want to do something what is high-tech or something like that or can be 
old fashioned in five years time. We combine a little bit old things with new things and at the same time to try to be timeless. For instance, the ceiling we did make is based on a historical map of the old city of Delft in combination with the villages around us and uh, it's the map of the um, where was for the first time the railroad track in there. But also if you look at the cladding of the building from the outside, because for us it was very important to make it a four-sided building, kind of glass building. But of course you, you can't make it totally of glass. So we try to play with two different kinds of glass. One is with a shadow box, so no uh, light go through it. And we cladded that with a kind of glass, was is almost like feels like old handmade glass in combination with the other glass that is high-tech glass. But I think for me it's also very important that everybody can have his own experience and his own interpretation. Um, but it also, I think, feels as a unique station. Often subway stations are designed that all the subway stations are more or less the same. Um, but I felt this should be really a station for Delft. And I think that's also how you experience it, I hope. <laughs>
to understand how technology and all these things and other issues like transition, what's happening in the world, and then we can come up with good solutions for that. I'm still um, that I think that we as architects has a responsibility to create a better world. And maybe that's very old fashioned, but um, and we have the skills to help the world, yes.